There are many instances in clinical endodontics where it is useful to know how to remove a post. Sometimes we're removing a post to facilitate retreatment efforts, and sometimes we need to remove a post to facilitate restorative efforts. One of the most important things about successful post removal is to eliminate all the core materials from within the pulp chamber. Another thing to pay special attention to is our ultrasonic instruments that are used to remove a post. In this instance, you're looking at a Pro Ultra Endo 1 tip, and it's basically a tapered cylinder with a ball on the end. We work at higher energies, preferably with a P5 generator, and at these higher energies, it's important to know that the tip is moving in a linear motion. The clinical feature of this means that if you hit the post in a glancing back and forth brushing manner, you won't transfer energy nearly as efficaciously. If you rotate the head of your handpiece just 90 degrees, then it's like a fighter throwing a punch, and you'll see and hear and feel a lot better energy transfer from the ultrasonic tip into the post. So once the buildup has been completely eliminated and all the materials have been removed between the axial walls and the post, we can begin thinking about ultrasonics as the first line of offense for successful post removal. I made up many years ago Cliff's 10 minute rule, but what this really meant is we can only vibrate on a post so long and it's either going to loosen and be eliminated or we'll need to have another fallback strategy. Be aware that when we're transferring energy into an all-metal post, heat is our enemy. About every 15 to 20 seconds, it's important to have the chair site assistant flush out the field, wick off growing heat, and keep the post cool so the transfer through dentin will not occur out to the attachment apparatus. Vibrate the post up and down its exposed length, and once you begin to see some checking and crack marks coming off from the post, you're really starting to undermine the post retention and that's the looting agent or the cement. Once the post is out, we can use a different Pro Ultra instrument like a number three or four to remove residual cements that were lateral to the post. In fact, it's virtually always axiomatic that apical to the post, you can find a hard cement such as zinc phosphate or in the newer era, bonded materials. These materials must be completely eliminated so we can get to the gutta percha, so we can continue treatment if in fact we're doing retreatment and we need to remove the gutta percha. If we look at a case of this mandibular second molar posterior bridge abutment, you can notice there's three posts that are apparently in three different canals. Look at the mesial root carefully and notice how broad it is mesial to distal, especially at about mid root. The bridge was removed from the abutment to further expose the buildup, and you can see, in fact, that the buccal side of the tooth on the right looks pretty much like a normal isolated tooth, but there's quite a protuberance of tooth structure on the mesial lingual or opposite side. The buildup should be resectioned in a thoughtful way, and I like to divide the post into thirds, so make a section to tooth structure, buccal to lingual, central to mesial, isolating the three posts with their core materials. Now we can simply remove all the buildup material around each individual post, and this will let us get more light and better vision deeper into the tooth. Now that you have exposed the post, you can use your rotary cutting tools, surgical length burrs come to mind, and you can make another cut, buccal to lingual, central to mesial. In this case, we see a change in color. That means we're going from a composite buildup to some kind of cement that's on the floor. Again, continue to remove buildup with your rotary cutting burrs like a surgical length number two, but at some point, when you're working in tight spots between a post and an axial wall, use ultrasonic instruments because they're about 10 times smaller than the smallest rotary cutting tools. We use these instruments at an efficient power that will safely accomplish the clinical task Use a brushing motion to chip out and break out all residual cements. Once the post has been fully exposed, we can begin to think about using a post removal ultrasonic tip to vibrate against the head of the post. This is an older version of the Pro Ultra 1. The newer version transfers about 30% more energy and will vibrate on this post up and down its length and around it circumferentially 
for up to 10 minutes. And again, if the post isn't coming out in 10 minutes, we need to think of another alternative way that we'll describe in another just-in-time post removal show. With the post out of the roots, respectively, you can see in that protuberance that I pointed out to you on the isolated tooth, there was another ML2 canal, and you can see the unidirectional stop is mapping the root is curving distal buccal. After shaping all the canals and cleaning, you can see the evidence of packing. You can see the pulpal floor has four orifices. And on the post-op film, you can see that that one ML2 had its own root, its own canal within that root, and it would have been kind of sobering if we would have decided to approach this case from a surgical standpoint. That ML2 is a long ways from the buccal cortical plate and especially surgery would be complicated noticing the rooting proximity to the neurovascular bundle. Complete endodontics is the foundation for restorative dentistry. Let's review how to remove stock posts that can be purchased from various suppliers. First, we need to have complete access and fully expose that part of the post that's in the pulp chamber. We need to make sure that we understand how to manage energy transfer and that simply means use the power of linear motion to make maximum energy transfer into the post. We vibrate up and down and circumferentially around the exposed head of the post and look for little striations and crack marks in the cement which is beginning to suggest post bond failure. You noticed in the animation that the post head got red that was done deliberately to bring attention to you need to use water every 15 to 20 seconds to prevent the post head from ever becoming red. In other words, we don't want heat transfer into the bone. We all know that if bone gets to about 10 degrees centigrade above 37 degrees body temperature, we can get osteomyelitis and necrosis. Once the post has been completely removed, use a longer, thinner, more tapered tip that will reach to the apical extent of where the post used to be and we can use this ultrasonic tip to remove residual materials. Post removal has become quite routine and even in the advent of adhesion dentistry the good news is most posts can be removed in about 10 minutes after they've been fully exposed.